If you could live green, would you? I'm Nick Fedorov, host of Things Green, where we introduce nuggets of green lifestyle from gardening, upcycling, answering your questions, sustainability, even discussing environmental issues. You can become more confident in making the right decisions for you and your family. So come along as we are Things Green. Out in the yard and garden has never been so much fun. With our many playful laser cut pet, garden, and yard signs. More information at instylesteel.com. For nearly 90 years, the Bonide family has provided solutions to lawn and garden pest problems. Whether it's an insecticide, weed killer, fungicide, or plant care product, Bonide products will provide you the best solution to your lawn, garden, or home pest problem. Southland Sod Farms, creators of genuine marathon sod, pre-grown tall fescue grass. More information at sod.com. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. And that's the way you keep your plants moist. Hi, I'm inviting you to come down to one of the free home shows where I give free garden talks. All you have to do is go to my website, thingsgreen.com, to see when the dates and the venues are at. Jim, you got a great patio over here, but it's not working on the TV. Here. How do you change the channel? I want so, to get my show on. That's not the TV remote, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> well, it almost looks like it's a game remote of some sort. What, what am I looking at here? Yeah, that's a Pentar uh, controller that we basically can use to turn on a number of electronics around the yard. So we can oh. turn a waterfall on, we can turn our pool lights on, our yard lights, a number of things. Okay. Real fun. All right, you know, here I thought we were going to have to watch, <laughs> get to watch my TV show because it's about that time. Yeah, I watch it all the time, Nick, but I, I can never pick it up with using this thing all. <laughs> okay, so we have an outdoor living area here, yeah. which is beautifully set. You've got uh, chairs. Mm -hmm. You can come out here with no shoes on if you wanted to. You got yourself a, a nice little out now. Or is this all, all out, outdoor? All what? outdoor furniture. All outdoor yeah. furniture. Yeah. Okay. So this way it can get wet and you're not going to have the mold and all that. That's right. They put special stuff inside there for the mold. Yep. yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then the plants. I, I noticed something pretty interesting. You got you got uh, some, speaking of mold, you got some moldy spaghetti in each one of them. Yes, What's Nick. up with that? So I, everything is on a drip system. So everything is automatically watered. We don't have to worry about going around with a little uh, watering can. Uh, it's all on a timer uh, through our automated automatic uh, watering system and uh, works really nice that way. So do you, uh, is this just spitting out? Oh yeah, this is just a little spaghetti the, tube. A spaghetti tube and it's just a emitter that's just Emitter that you can control out. and you could control the flow through the end of that. So, oh, okay. You know. So if you wanted to have a shoot out a little bit, More, have a little water yes. fight while you're sitting over here. Yeah, or... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's do you right. water any particular time of the day? Uh, I just water once or twice a Actually, week during the winter like this um, for about an, uh, what is it, about a minute or two. Okay. It doesn't take much. Thank and then, you. of course, we want saucers underneath, and you don't want that stuff spilling onto the carpet. Anymore. Yeah, so we have the saucer activity going on. Yeah. And you have some pretty durable plants here. I love, yes. I love the idea that you have these ficus here because, right. because they're, uh, they're really good for for oxygen, yeah. kicking out oxygen. So if you wanted these kind of plants inside your house for that as well. Yeah, here in Bakersfield, we're, we leave everything out all through the winter with the exception of the, the, the Dracaena. So all the Dracaena 
are the most sensitive to frost that we found in Bakersfield. So when we see a thread of frost, we bring all of this plant in. Everything else stays outside. Even all year though, round. even though you've got a covered, a little bit of protection, a little bit of protection. Yeah, to do that, it huh? seems to kill the growing point, and all of a sudden, all the leaves start falling off. But our rubber plants, our ficas, our everything else, uh, the, all the other palms do well. And you're kind of uh, hard pressed to to kill a spider plant because those are pretty much possessed plants. Yes. They just yeah. grow. By yeah. the way, I actually grow a spider plant as ground cover at my house. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Because you have all the little plantlets, they start growing like this, covers everything yeah. up. Yeah, I love yeah. it. Oh, look yeah. at this, you got it. Look, look how dark green. Yeah, you that have thing it on really the rubber took tree. off. Yeah, and yeah. I'm kind of to the point where I'm thinking of doing some air layering, air layering on this. Oh, nice. Where, you know, you make a little wound, put a little hormone powder in there, wrap it with some sphagnum moss and plastic and you could start a new plant so air layering is exactly what he had mentioned and if you had an exa if you had a chance to see the citrus show that we did it's taking in just a little bit further with that tea bud that he was doing where he would take and he'd instead of just making the the little tea that he made he would do it up on the top as well as the bottom but all the way around you pull out that that uh, that first layer there to expose the cambium and then you pack it and, and you know what I think our friend Ricardo from Ricardo's Nursery. Uh, maybe we can get a picture from him. He does a lot of air layering as well. And then once this plant starts taking off and doing what it's supposed to do, you have your, your air layer right here, let's just say. You'd end up getting a bunch of roots right here. And then once it's rooted up, you cut it right here. You've got a whole new plant that is rooted. Mm -hmm. And that's what's really cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have an entertainment area to watch. Yeah. Things green, very, very smart. Yes. We've got a little coffee table over there, and that coffee table is good for sitting around and a little cappuccino here and there. So you've got a lot, right. of, a lot of relaxing. Yeah. And then we have, uh, well, we're having dinner over here. Yes. Breakfast, dinner, what do we, yeah, that's, that's good. Right here. Uh, yep. How dusty does things get having all this yeah. furniture? Yeah, my wife, she's always cleaning the outside. I oh. said, you know, how clean could you keep the outside? It is, by the way, the outside. But here in Bakersfield, we got a little winds, we got a lot of dust and it gets coated. So she's out here blowing it off and washing it off, I would say almost once a month. Oh, you okay. Know? Yeah. Right. yeah. Which actually, that's not that bad. Yeah. And yeah. if the truth was known, I certainly don't do that at my house. <laughs> <laughs> but you do have all this soot, you have uh, elements from the air, you've yeah. got smog, it'll work its way in through all this kind of yeah. stuff. And it's not a bad idea to wash your plants off once in a while yeah. anyhow, especially in not only drought conditions, but in Southern California, we've got fires, mm -hmm. and uh, the way that that, that, that oh, yeah. ash can, can do that mm -hmm. is, uh, is that. Yeah. So, uh, all right, so we have all these other, we have these elements over here. Uh, anything that I'm missing? The water feature. The water feature. Okay, so this is... Uh, Look at that smile that came on his face, huh? <laughs> that was a classic, the water feature. Yeah. And I, and I noticed you haven't put this down yet. Right. This is the controller we talked about earlier, and this allows me to just push a button here, and I know that the water feature starts with A, and we give a little bit of time, and what happens is it launches uh, water coming out of different ports. Some of them take a little longer than others, um, but this is really my little taste of the mountains uh, from um, sitting here in Bakersfield and it allows me to feel from this little spot that I'm in the Sierra, in the Mount Sierra Nevada mountains. Nice. Now Nevada this mountains. right here is, this is a custom made feature. Yeah. You built this. Yes, I built that. Now, nice. I went over, over the course of about two summers, a little at a time, uh, I placed the rocks. I'm really particular. Each rock was probably repositioned four or five times before it settled into its ro location that it is now. You have to work hard to artificially create a natural environment. You know, that's that's a mouthful right there. Yeah. I, I have to tell you what I was impressed of when I when I when you just turn this on mm -hmm. is the way you have this right here. Can I? Mm -hmm. can yeah. I? Okay. Yeah. So we're gonna do. Hopefully, I'm not gonna. Where's the trout? The salmon. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you see this rock right here? The water is coming down and it's splashing yeah. the rock. You yeah. just didn't make a water fountain out of it to make it yeah. come down. Yeah, yeah, and the way I like it is a lot, of, a lot of times you could have a fountain, but
but then the water sits in the fountain. What I like about this, all the water drains underneath the ground. Nothing, we don't have any standing water, so we don't have any algae buildup or, or anything. It always stays oh. nice and pure. And all the water really empties into a, a spot right here, and I have sponges and other filters that filter the water before actually finding its final resting place below the ground. Now, and then that gets pumped up. Okay, so uh, how big of a tank do you have underneath? Oh, so what it is, it's called an aqua block. An aqua block is kind of like if you could remember the old milk uh, milk oh. carriers, those plastic things that look similar like that. It's hollow, very strong plastic. And you place those underneath or actually on top of the liner and that's what stores the water. And Oh, I don't know how many gallons. It's quite a bit of quite a bit of an area of water storage underneath this. Okay. Because we're powering a number of pumps that have to pull all that water up. Okay, so you have electrical hidden someplace. Yes, we've got electrical outlet behind here and uh, everything plugs into that. We also have, and I don't know if it could be seen, but we've got some lights that light up at night in okay. here. So it so creates the, the right ambiance for uh, evening. Okay, now for the record, to be as natural as possible what he's created over here. But the man is a cheater. He's a <laughs> cheater because there's one element here that is not natural, is it? Yeah, but that's you can't right. tell. It, no, you can't tell. <laughs> so we bought this. Uh, you could buy what's called these rock fountains at a number of garden centers. That's a resin made <laughs> fountain. But I incorporated it into other rocks and boulders to make it look natural. And that water is just recirculating within the fountain. All the water oh, around no it. Oh, no kidding, it's yeah. all by its own some. That's all, all on its own. Nice. And it goes on at the same time. Okay, so uh, I get the idea that it's all gonna be settled down inside the ground mm -hmm. and like that. Mm -hmm. Are you put, ever putting any kind of chemical in No, there? it's all just natural water. Really? Um, I, I do that because I'm not sure what effect that might have on the pump. You know, some pumps just don't want you to use anything but natural water. And it's all just purified water through, by going through the little filters, little uh, sponges and things that I could change and pull out and wash and clean up. It's fairly low maintenance, and it provides a lot of enjoyment, I tell you. That's really nice. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Well, and thank I, you for sharing. And I, I see you have some tunes over there, too. Yeah, and I, <laughs> I, yeah. I have to say there's some areas. Uh, I had a lithodora in that spot that he's kind of showing right there. And that, oh, that blank spot that, right that there. That blank spot had a lithodora in it. Okay. it. It was beautiful in the spring, nice blue flowers. And the Bakersfield heat killed it around oh, the end of August. No. I still want to give another shot, one more try with that plant, because that plant cascaded nicely over these boulders. And it made a larger green space than would normally be. So I wanted to make sure I had these little islands or pockets of good soil that I could plant. Like there's a periwinkle in there, uh, Vinca minor, that uh, it's now in bloom, starting to go. And that'll start growing this spring. And that cascades over the rocks too. Anything that I could do to, and, and this is a ice plant over here, that, that gets to be a little bit fuller too during the summer when that gets enough sun. What, what color would the flower be on that? Uh, it's a little, uh, I think a little blue flower blue? as well. Yeah, nice. And, and then by the way, got, that could propagate easily too. Yeah, and then we've got some flowers around and planted in there that'll start coming up later too. So. And of course the plants cascade. That's, yeah. that's what gives it the natural feel. Right, right. Yeah. But I love the idea of how you incorporated the phony baloney one in there. Yeah, right. And, and it brings things up as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that looks yeah. really, really sharp. Yeah. Okay, now you're good, you're, you're good on the philodendrons over here. You got plenty of those going around. Yeah, I They're love tough. this plant. Uh, looks like we have a jade plant. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I forget the name of it. Acacia. No. I think. Ecke, uh, I can't remember that I one. can't remember the name right now. Yeah. I'm drawing a blank. Echeveria. Yeah, there you go. I uh, got that. I see uh, I see by the by the cement pond over here. Yeah. You've got yourself some uh, sagos and some other stuff. Yeah. But what also interests me is that you also have a little uh, raised vegetable garden bed. Yes, yes. And, and uh, I know that you're a big fan of broccoli. <laughs> broccoli. Yeah. <laughs> you know, do you know that there's a song called Broccoli and Chocolate? Chocolate? No. <laughs> broccoli and Chocolate. Something something I do a lot. Yeah. Uh, this is a fatsia. Yeah. Yeah, that does real well. Uh, and then this uh, Phoenix, one here, uh, your, your Phoenix Robolini. This yeah. uh, this one right here, you don't have to pull it out of the for the for the uh, frost. No, it does. Really? Real. All of them have been doing really well for us. Yeah, this one right here, Phoenix. 
these will be sold as either singular plants or you'll typically buy them as with uh, in triples or quadruple trunks on it. Very nice plant. This, this will stay in here for years and years mm -hmm, and years. Mm -hmm. uh, if you allow it to go into the ground, uh, I have one at my office that's got to be about 12 feet tall. There's one behind that light, but I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, it's uh, fully grown there. Yeah, really nice. Yeah. And you get your, uh, you get your queen palms in the back. Yeah. There. Yeah, they're all looking good. Those were here, and then I planted uh, this. Um, uh, what is it called again? Uh, Canary Island palm. Yeah, a Canary Island palm. That's Canary Island palm. This will get gigantic. Oh yeah. yeah, this is going to be our biggest and palm if in the you, yard. And if you if you need any skewers for your barbecuing, you can. <laughs> this, yeah, this is a nasty plant, isn't you it? You got to watch because these are really sharp. When you go yeah. in there to prune it and everything, you could really get yourself some serious hurt. Yeah, and then. Uh, a magnolia. Yeah. My goodness. Now you're doing what a lot of cities have done. Yeah. You've got a big open space. You'll see these in parks. Yeah. Uh, and but this is one. The only downfall that I see with this plant right here, not that I'm criticizing it, it's got an awesome, uh, 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 almost fake uh, pond over there. Yeah. Is that you get these surface roots? Yeah. And these yeah. surface roots could be a problem when you're uh, mowing your lawn. So you got to be very careful around the roots when you're doing the lawn. Mm -hmm. That's super, super. But the, you can't argue with the flowers. Man. Yes. Is this one right. flowering now? I uh, mean, it has been. It has yeah. been? Yeah. OK, so you got a little bit of a orchard here. Yeah, this is my citrus orchard. Citrus orchard. Looks yep. like you have everything from oranges to there's uh We got some uh, limes in there. We got some uh, uh, sumo oranges. We got some kara uh, kara oranges. Look, look how gross this is. <laughs> look at that. Yeah. Look at that. Looks like it's full of. It's a different. Almost yeah. looks like a gourd is what it does. Yeah. Reminds me of a gourd. And it's very. You can notice, Ray, uh, Nick. It's very subject to sunburn, yeah. and that's the problem we see when that's it's right exposed here. to the sun, and that really affects the fruit. Uh, you really want. Does it dry it out inside? Uh, n yeah, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of. Okay, so let's get to this over here because okay. container gardening is actually the number one form of gardening, mm -hmm. and and what's really cool about this. Is is that is that uh, your your pots, for instance, they're imported all the way from all the way from uh, uh, yeah from Nebraska from Nebraska. Yeah, I brought them with me. Uh, I I was a good friend of a nurseryman, and he had a lot of these extra pots. I didn't want to tear up the lawn, so I utilized them. I filled them with potting soil and began growing uh, well broccoli in them. <laughs> And, you can uh, smell the broccoli. <laughs> you can smell the plant from here. This yeah. is a pungent plant, folks. This isn't something that uh, that 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 if you're going to plant a bunch of this, you could actually smell them. Yes. So um, this looks like it's bolting, but it's yes. So it's bolting. Right. Bolting is a condition. Right. Yeah. So you're wondering why am I growing these this past this stage, and and they are obviously are past the stage of eating, and I do that because this is an open pollinated broccoli variety that allows me to let it go to seed. And then I harvest those seeds. They, they form little seed pods. And then I just kind of break them open and save that seed and replant it the following year. Okay, you keep on talking. I'm gonna bring the seeds. Okay, right. okay. And now there's other plants like here that you can see uh, that just fell out of actual good production. You know, we, you want a nice tight bud. When that bud doesn't become tight anymore, you have to kind of let it go. And for, for that, I will allow them. And actually this is almond blooming time. So we'll get a lot of little bees harvesting the pollen off these plants. So it is a good service to honeybees by letting it go to flower. Yeah. <laughs> what's that? What's that, that, that uh, oh, the cucarachas? Or... <laughs> <laughs> okay, these yep. are seeds that you yeah. would harvest it from here. Yeah, these were seeds that I harvested actually two years ago. And you could see, you could harvest buckets of these uh, seed and just continue to uh, use as many. Uh, here's another envelope full of seeds and uh, provides all the seeds you want. And then again, you could plant them as thick as you want. I usually plant several of them in a single pot and then I thin them out and start transplanting them in the fall. I start around late August mm. and I continue to about mid-September and then I kind of shut it off and then I start just growing these plants. So are you intentionally allowing them to bolt or are they just gonna yeah. do that? 
or is nature telling them to bolt? Um, the, nature's telling them they become just overly grown, and then they just they're basically doing what nature intended. They're going to flower to produce seed. Will you cut the water off so they can bolt faster? Uh, no, I actually leave the flower the, the water running just because I don't want it drying out too quick if we get hot weather here. Okay, bolting happens on plants for a lot of different reasons. And typically, you don't want this to happen unless you're intentionally wanting this to happen. Uh, many times, if you have inconsistent watering practices, uh, they'll bolt, or even still, especially in Southern California, you can have a day that is just 72 degrees, and then the next day, it's gonna hit 95, and the next day, it's back down to 72. That temperature uh, increase and de uh, decrease will actually trick the plants and they start growing and many times you'll see just a big old stalk and then you'll have you have plant going up on top over here mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah 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 and it's and, and because it's not that type of variety they don't necessarily go to seed right yeah. right it, and now I'll have to admit these open pollinated varieties don't produce as large of a head as your hybrid varieties. So it's still not a bad idea to go to the nursery center and buy transplants, which is what I did on some of these, and they produce a larger head. So you have to plant a lot more plants if you're going to plant open pollinated. That's what I was going to ask you. Do you, do you yeah. have any heads? I, I thought yeah. I saw a little in, bit In the garden there. here, there's a few that are still you could almost harvest, but we're really at oh, a point. Oh, on that side over there. Yeah, we're really at a point where we're kind of past the time when uh, we're, we're really harvesting these for, for eating purposes. And that ended about a week ago. Okay. But yeah, you know, you so you're still at, you're still getting them at this side yeah, right here. Yeah, some of these still could be useful. You know, you cut the main head off and then uh, these side shoots form. And uh, you want, of course, a, a nice tight, tight oh, head. Oh, that tight is so good. And they're good. Broccoli you is so good for you. You can't get any better than this right here, <laughs> right off the plant. That's right. Mm. Yeah. In fact, just munching down on it like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, they say for uh, for men, broccoli and tomatoes are the two things that really help your health. Oh. Uh, and I, I grow both of them. The, the trouble is I don't grow them both at the same time. I grow oh. broccoli in the winter and I grow my tomatoes in the summer. So Yeah, now here you have, yeah. and by the way, depending on where you live, you can grow broccoli in the in the springtime, summertime, yeah. Yeah. you know, but tomatoes, they're warm. They need, they, they need the heat. Yeah. And is that what you learned? Because you're not originally from this no, neck of the woods. I'm from Nebraska. And the reason you see so much broccoli is we could not grow good broccoli in Nebraska. <laughs> it got too hot in the spring and it got too cold in the fall. You plant it during a cooler season uh, and we never had a long enough cool season. But here in Bakersfield, it goes the entire winter. Yeah, I love it. That's here. pretty cool. Yeah. Now you have some varieties of yeah. tomatoes over here. Are these some of your favorites? Yeah, some of the favorites. And I like to start some from seed. I'll go to the garden center and get transplants. But sometimes I like having fun in, in early winter like this and starting my own uh, transplants. Okay, now here you have a, uh, a seed bin, right? Yeah, it's a little dome. Uh, basically, we could we could untie this and, and see some of the young seedlings. So you could buy these at those hydroponics uh, stores throughout California. Uh, they sell these little plastic domes, and it allows the heat to stay trapped in here. Um, and uh, okay, while he's untying that, I want to teach you a little little language lesson over here. He has no idea that he's talking Russian <laughs> because the word dome in Russian means house. Oh. so he got a little house here. Yeah, ha! yeah. You're never gonna look at this the same way. Yeah. Okay. So there you, you go. So you can see how the how much the humidity builds up, and then uh, here I have uh, you know little uh, little seed packets that uh, oh look at that. You, you can see the cuddling yeah. leaves. There's uh, some of the uh, new tomato plants that, that yeah. I started. Now the first set of leaves that you have are not what they call the true leaves of the plant. They're the mm -hmm. coddling leaves. They're not gonna look like the rest of the leaves in the plant. This is pretty much all in the whole plant world. And it's pretty fascinating. When you grow something like this from a seed and, and then sometimes he don't have it here because he's got this absolutely beautiful soil that he's working with. And it's all compost, isn't it? Yeah, in this case, Nick, it's compost. Sometimes I use potting mix or potting soils, but this time I decided to try some of the compost I made. Well, I'll tell you, this is a really fascinating thing that you got going on over here. And then you keep this for how long? Uh, this will. So I planted this a couple weeks ago and it's been a little bit slow because we've had a little cool weather. But one of the things that 
I do with with these trays. I'll try and lift it up and show you underneath oh, here. Oh, you cheater! Like you worried? I told you you're a cheater with the rocks. <laughs> and you're a cheater with with Mother Nature. Yeah, this this keeps them a little bit warmer. It's so, a seedling mat. Seedling mat. This is what they normally use. I won't say normally, but they use many times in professional greenhouses. Mm -hmm. Ah, mm -hmm. he's cutting Gets a little corners. Bit starter. That's why he's a doctor. He knows this <laughs> kind of stuff. Yeah. That's and so cool. It allows us to start them outside because one of the things that I found, I used to start these indoors where it was warmer, but I didn't get enough light. Uh -huh. And then they, the plants would grow really spindly. And by the time I got them outside, they really didn't look good. So mm -hmm. this, this lets them grow a little bit slower. Okay. In the time that we have left over here, mm -hmm. I, want to, I want to talk about this real quick. You've got a compost pile. And I really love the approach that you're talking about because yeah. because you said that you're, you do plant directly into your compost yeah. pile. You, look at that. This is just beautiful soil. It is, right here. Nick. I'm really happy the way this turned out. I kept mixing it and mixing it, and it, it became really fine. And I looked at that, and I thought, that would make a good seed starting mix. So it's just straight compost that I made, mixing leaves and grass clippings and mixing it through the summer and keeping it moist. One of the things that... Uh, where people fail with their compost making is it's too dry. I actually have to set sprinklers here and, and water the compost so that the bacteria stay alive and break it down. And the other thing that you had told me is that uh, you, uh, you, you have to borrow some clippings mm -hmm. from your neighbors. Yeah. Uh, you like the idea that there's such a big variety of leaves that are around right. and has different types of acidity to all this and yeah. it just breaks down and you have beautiful soil. Beautiful compost. Man, thank you very much. Oh, thanks, Nick. This is exciting it's being here. It's been yeah. Fun. Greatly appreciate you having here. Yeah. This is the same thing that you can do. You could have your own garden. Grow broccoli. <laughs> Thanks for joining me on another excursion of Things Green. Our goal is to educate, inform, and entertain so you can become exposed to a green lifestyle inside and outside of the home and community, all on your terms. Join me next time right here as we help you with Things Green. John Dalmatoff Backhoe Service has been serving Southern California for over 22 years and is a proud supporter of Things Green. Being out in the yard and garden has never been so much fun. With our many playful laser cut pet, garden, and yard signs, more information at instylesteel.com. For nearly 90 years, the Bonide family has provided solutions to lawn and garden pest problems. Whether it's an insecticide, weed killer, fungicide, or plant care product, Bonide products will provide you the best solution to your lawn, garden, or home pest problem. Southland Sod Farms, creators of genuine marathon sod. Pre-grown, tall fescue grass. More information at sod.com. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. And that's the way you keep your plants moist. Hi, I'm inviting you to come down to one of the free home shows where I give free garden talks. All you have to do is go to my website, thingsgreen.com, to see when the dates and the venues are at.